Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this very special occasion as we recognize the change of command for the 42nd Fighter Wing, from Brigadier General David Piferrario to Colonel David Castaneda. The presiding official for today's ceremony is Major General Brian Borgen, Commander, 10th Air Force. Unable to be here, he will be virtually officiating the ceremony. I am Technical Sergeant Paul Cook, your narrator for today's events. As a reminder, please silence all electronic devices. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, Ruffles and Flourishes, the playing of the national anthem, and the invocation by Chaplain Marcus Aziz. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whom we live, move, and find our being, we're grateful that you do hear our prayers and you've spared us yet again from Storm Saias. Though we do pray for all those still in the pathway of this tropical depression, we've come here this afternoon to ask your gracious hand of blessing upon today's change of command. Lord, our hearts are exceedingly grateful for the indelible deposit Brigadier General David Perferrario has made on the 482nd Fighter Wing Makos. What an exemplary servant leader you have given us for such time as this. God, we pray that you would continue to pour your richest blessings over him. His beloved wife, Dr. Jennifer, and filled with life, son, Bryce. God, we are truly indebted for the exceptional care, support, and fierce guidance we have received from them. Place a hedge of protection around them in this new journey. Father, open doors, pave the way. May they soar to even greater heights. Father, we now pray for our new wing commander, Colonel David Castaneda, grant him the assurance that you alone in your sovereign will brought him here for a purpose, a great purpose. And so invest him with all wisdom and prudence, health, and resolve to continue leading the Homestead Air Reserve Base toward great success and mission accomplishment. Father, bless his wife Rochelle, his children Ryan, and Maya and Jace, and we're grateful for the example set before him by his beloved parents here this afternoon, Louis and Donna. May all that is said and done here this day bring a great deal of honor and glory to you. Amen.
Thank you, Chaplain Aziz. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. To help recognize the importance of this ceremony, we are joined by the families of Colonel Castaneda, his wife, Rochelle, their sons, Ryan and Jace, and daughter, Maya, his father, Louis, and mother, Donna, his sisters, Jeannie Castaneda, and Christine Latham. We are also joined by Vice Commander, 482nd Fighter Wing, Colonel Adam Myers, Command Chief's wife, Micah Bluto, Commander 482nd Operations Group, Colonel Mark Van Brunt. Commander 482nd Mission Support Group, Colonel David Biggs. Commander 482nd Maintenance Group, Lieutenant Colonel Colin Shelton. Commander 482nd Medical Squadron, Colonel Stephen Clow. We would also like to welcome all commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, civic leaders, family and friends who are viewing this ceremony virtually. Due to the protocol restrictions during COVID-19, we have deviated slightly from the standard ceremony procedures to ensure safety distancing. From ancient times, armies throughout the world have conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over the enemy, to honor comrades in arms, and to celebrate special occasions such as change of command. History reveals that in the Middle Ages, it was not uncommon for the soldiers in the field to be unaware of whom their commanders were or what they looked like. The formal change of command afforded these soldiers the opportunity to witness the proceedings and actually see their commanders. The Continental Army of the United States conducted the first official ceremonies in America. This was the basis from which the present ceremony is derived. The primary purpose of the change of command ceremony today is to allow subordinates to witness the formal transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one officer to another. These ceremonies have added color and pageantry to military life while preserving tradition and stimulating esprit de corps. I am now pleased to introduce our presiding official, Major General Brian Borgen, Commander, 10th Air Force. Good morning. Coming to you from 10th Air Force, our uh, original plan for uh, change of command between Piff and Pounder was to be there with you all at, uh, at the 482nd at Homestead. These are some truly crazy times that we're living in. I think we're all going to look back at 2020 as one of the most unusual years ever in the history of uh, the United States, maybe the world. Um, you know, in, in the last six months, we've been dealing with COVID. Uh, we've been dealing with uh, earthquakes. We just had an earthquake up in Alaska. We've got some civil unrest going around the nation, and now, uh, now hurricane once again down in uh, southern Florida. So uh, apologies that we couldn't be there with you in person to uh, to visit with the the great airmen of the 482nd and all that you do. But uh, we wanted to make sure this was special for uh, both both families as we move uh, move to the change of command. Tell you this is a this is a great day for the 482nd. Um, you've had uh, a, a leader that is so selfless in uh, Dave Pifferario that um, I, I just I just can't thank him enough and the support from all of you to make this command uh, tour for two years for Piff so successful. Uh, Piff, I got to tell you, we all know that our spouses are what what make us and our families are what make us and you've got an excellent spouse. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time and effort that you put in. This command tour never goes uh, in a perfect fashion without the help and support of the people that are, uh, that are around you as a leader. For me, there's nothing that, uh, that I can do without my wife, Mary, and I know uh, Piff feels the same. I got a chance last week, or actually about a week and a half ago, I was up in Alaska where Piff has already moved the family up uh, to his new job at 11th Air Force, and I got to meet their son Bryce, who's seven. And uh, as I talked to Bryce, it was amazing. The child seemed as if he was about 15. He is such, such an, a magnificent young man, and that is a testament to uh, to you, Piff, and and Jennifer. So excellent work raising the next leader that hopefully will be a part of the Carnivore Nation of 10th Air Force down the road. Likewise. Uh, Leaders and, and human beings don't develop without great parents. And I know Pierre and Marianne Piss folks are out there uh, watching this at some point. 
And I want to tell you, you did a, an outstanding job. Well done. Uh, I can see the traits of the leadership, and I can see the, uh, the ability to be a servant leader uh, exuding from the work that you've did, done, and, and I've never met you. Uh, I appreciate that, and I appreciate what you've done for our Air Force as well. As a uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Pierre, excellent work, and uh, honored to, uh, to be able to speak to you today. Piff was an Air Force brat. So, you know, he lived overseas when he was young, moved around a lot uh, from England to Germany and then back to Colorado Springs. And like all of us that uh, spent time on active duty and then in the reserve, we, we tend to uh, forget about how much we move around and the experiences that we have. Uh, in all of that time, the experiences that, that Piff came across, uh, a lot of them, while developing him directly for leadership roles also culminated in athletics. Uh, if you've ever had the humbling experience of working out with Piff, which I'm not crazy enough to do, you can tell his years of playing football, hockey, every other sport that was out there, combined with his CrossFit training that he does to this day, uh, really tell you something about who he is off the Air Force grid and what is important to him to maintain balance and to uh, enjoy a fulfilling life. Uh, Piff is just a monster in the workout room and, and he's, he's consistently had 100 on his PT score for the last 10 years. And he would, if we'd have been tracking it before that, I'm sure it would go back a lot further than that. So uh, a really impressive Piff. Uh, remind me to never, never, ever work out with you because uh, th that would be a crazy dichotomy between the two of us. As a 482nd commander, Piff commanded three groups, 13 squadrons, um, an F-16 detachment, as well as uh, the main body there at, uh, at Homestead, uh, over 2,000 personnel, but he's also the leader in this job of the entire base. It's one of eight bases we own in the AFRC that, that is owned solely by uh, our own entity, entity, which brings a lot of mission partners, a lot of different uh, uh, necessities that have to be taken care of where someone that's attended on a host unit doesn't have to do. He did it expertly. You all did it expertly and you continue to do it that way each year. In addition to being ready for worldwide combat as an F-16 organization, the 482nd also has the job currently with our Commander-in-Chief to, uh, to do the Operation Noble Eagle Presidential Support Mission. With the uh, proximity to our President's home at Mar-a-Lago, that put a great tasking on the uh, 482nd and you guys just crushed it and came through it with such success. In addition to all that, as I talked about before, Piff led the wing with your excellent work through three, now four, hurricanes. You all just uh, hurricaned all of your aircraft from uh, Homestead to here at uh, Fort Worth, and once again, flawlessly pulled this off, and we got our folks back to uh, to be with their families. Hopefully, uh, this storm will pass, and uh, we'll be able to move on and, and get back to normal here in just a few days. But that leadership comes from all of you. With that, I'll say to uh, the men and women of the 482nd, uh, being innovative, being supportive, being dedicated carnivore airmen is what pushed PIF success rate through the last, PIF's success rate through the last two years. Without you, like all of us, nothing would have happened. We are superbly proud of all of your efforts. PIF, you've done a phenomenal job for the last two years and throughout your whole career. You're an excellent friend of mine. I look up to you. I get mentored by you, uh, as all of our senior leaders do. I'm looking forward to watching you take the, the next job and the next job after that. Uh, you are certainly one of the people capable of running this entire Air Force Reserve, and you'll do it with grace and style if that's what ends up being in your future. I have every confidence in you, and as a friend, God bless you, Godspeed to you and Jennifer as you move through the next, uh, the next opportunity and the next uh, mission that you're, that you're putting yourself into. Thank you so much, and uh, give, me, give me a call if there's anything that I can do for you. Dave Pounder Castaneda. Dave's coming in. Uh, last job was at the Pentagon. I've known Dave for about 10 years. 
excellent leader as well. I know the support that the 482nd has given PIF will be seamless as, as Pounder transitions uh, into this job. Certainly proud and uh, certainly grateful that I had the opportunity once again in one of our 17 direct reports to pick a leader that I have every confidence in. Pounder, you're certainly in that group. Pounder's been married to uh, his wife, Rachel, since 2008. They met in Utah um, as, uh, as Pounder was flying at Hill. Um, she recently retired from the Air Force Reserve as a, uh, as a medical admin officer. Uh, thank you very much for that, that great work as well. Truly an Air Force and Air Force Reserve family uh, between Pounder and Rachel. He has four children. Yeah, Jordan, Ryan, Maya, and Jace. Uh, Jordan being the oldest at 20, and uh, Ryan at 11, Maya at 9, and Jace is, is 6 years old. And uh, I have three kids, I have three kids myself, and I know the balance in life it takes to, uh, to do two jobs, because uh, Pounder also works for FedEx, like, like myself, so he's been balancing two uh, full-time gigs, quite frankly, while raising a great family, and that, that only comes as a team, and I want to thank each of you for that. Your parents, Lou and Donna, are uh, hopefully being able to watch and listen as we go through this, this process today and uh, this change of command, and my thanks to you as well, uh, Lou and Donna, for your great, great uh, leadership and, and consistency in raising a phenomenal Air Force leader. He also is a gym rat. So if anyone thinks that the emphasis on physical fitness at the 482nd is going to go uh, in a different route, think again. He spends a lot of time in the gym and, uh, and, and has an expectation, like we all do, of those standards to make your life more fulfilled as a fit airman. Join the Air Force to fly fighters. And uh, to have the ability to, to live in place was a goal that came with uh, transitioning to AFRC and the, and the reserve component, and uh, kind of like PIF, how'd that work out for you? Uh, when you exude the leadership that the, the two of these guys do and they get put on this track, if they decide to balance their life with that uh, responsibility, they're going to be back moving as uh, if they were on active duty, and I think both of them have found that uh, phenomenal to me that uh, we still have people that are willing to step up and do that uh, for years and years at a time, and, uh, and Pounder, you're a uh, you're excellent in your flexibility to do this. Uh, while working for FedEx is a full-time job, when you get in these positions um, like Pounder's about to move into, it requires a lot more time, uh, typically full-time. So uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with this process as I move in and out of uh, active status with the reserve over the years. It seems like I've been gone from my primary job more than I've been there. And I think Pounder's finding that to be the, the same. Pounder comes to us as an F-16 entity as well, but he's also uh, part of the team, initial cadre. He was selected to be on the initial cadre of the F-35 uh, process as we stood up F-35s at, at uh, Hill Air Force Base in Utah. He was, uh, he was on that initial team, and he was a huge part of bringing the F-35 community into AFRC. And in addition, he was the first 06, the first colonel, to, uh, to be checked out in the uh, F-35. So he brings a fifth gen background uh, to, uh, to this base with a strategic view that, uh, that I'm sure you will see as he moves forward in this job. I, uh, I wanna tell Pounder directly, since we're doing this virtually, that uh, I'm super proud of you, brother. Uh, I know you're gonna do an, an excellent job. Uh, you have excellent airmen within uh, the 482nd and Godspeed to you. Uh, my phone is uh, your phone. Call me anytime with anything that I can help with. Uh, I'll end with, with that. Uh, congratulations to both of you. Uh, Godspeed to the 482nd and uh, to all of your families. Uh, good luck and uh, let me know where I can help with the, uh, the storm that's passing through. And once again, I sincerely wish that I could be there with all of you today. We'll be making a visit there very soon so that I can come see your operation in action. Have a great day and uh, continue with the change of command. Thank you, General Borgen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Legion of Merit to General Peferrario. Attention to orders. Brigadier General David A. Peferrario distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 482nd Fighter Wing Homestead Air Reserve Base, Florida, from 2 August 2018 to 3 July 2020. During this period, his leadership, devotion to duty, and exceptional management of the 482nd Fighter Wing personnel and programs were instrumental to the success of the F-16 Mako mission. As the wing commander, he successfully led one of eight Air Force Reserve Command's host bases consisting of over 3,500 3, wing personnel, three groups, 12 squadrons, and five mission partner units supporting a F-16 with an active associate detachment. A combat-focused commander, General Preferario led 16 successful deployments exercises, and humanitarian efforts for the United States Air Force and the 482nd Fighter Wing. During his command, he was challenged with major life-threatening hurricanes that directly impacted the base and local community. Under his guidance, he safely ev evacuated 21 Mako F-16s to Texas when Hurricane Dorian was on course for the base. As the destructive storm shifted, operations quickly moved into the creation of special joint task force consisting of approximately 500 airmen, soldiers, and sailors that set up an interim support base. His cyber team of professionals became one of the first Air Force Reserve Command installations to acquire a counter unmanned aircraft system with detection and defeat capabilities which detour and detects unmanned aircraft penetration to the base. When the historic coronavirus pandemic impacted our nation, he immediately put the base into a health protection condition Charlie due to the base's close proximity to Miami, one of the hardest hit areas for the spread of the virus, ensuring the safety of wing personnel and their families. Throughout his command, General Piferario promoted a positive, respectful culture of professional airmen leaving a legacy for others to follow. The superior initiative, outstanding leadership, and personal endeavor displayed by General Piferario reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Please be seated. We will now have the pleasure of hearing from our outgoing commander, Brigadier General David Piferario. Thanks, Paul. Good afternoon. Buenos tardes. You know, we started this two years ago, and it was pouring rain outside when Colonel Dave Biggs and I took command on the exact same uh, day, and it is pouring outside today as well, so uh, what, a, what a befitting way to uh, end a, uh, a tour. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. This is one of the strangest changes of command, I think, that... Uh, I've ever been a part of, but it's certainly the right thing to do for our airmen, uh, for Colonel Castaneda, and for his family uh, who've visited us today. So how do you do that? In just a few minutes, how do you capture all the amazing things this wing has accomplished and the many thanks that go to so many uh, airmen? Time won't allow me to get to you all, but please allow me to mention a few before I speak more directly to the men and women of the world's greatest fighter wing. Uh, Major General Borgen, uh, our 10th Air Force commander, uh, is an amazing leader. I say that because he's my boss. But I say that because it's also true. I've seen many great NAF commanders. In fact, I've had the opportunity to serve with Major General Borgen under Lieutenant General Scobie when General Scobie was the NAF commander, arguably uh, one of our best. And General Borgen is right there uh, with him. General Borgen leads by example, truly cares for us, and all the airmen in 10th Air Force and fights for us every day. I know the workload he carries for our great Air Force in the nation. I know his days and nights uh, are filled with uh, a lot of work. And thanks to you uh, and Mary, all that you do for us, General Borgen. Uh, to the Castaneda family, uh, Rochelle, Ryan, Maya, Jace, uh, I'm extremely excited for you. I really am. Uh, your family who's joined us today, uh, Lou, Donna, Christine, and uh, Jeannie, uh, 
How do you and your family uh, bring to Homestead a track record of excellence and a clear passion for mission, uh, people, and their families? Uh, your record speaks for itself. Experience on the air staff with the F-35, fifth generation, will certainly advance our efforts to get that aircraft here to the 482nd Fighter Wing. Uh, bienvenidos. You're going to have to learn Spanish, trust me, on that. That means welcome. We have an amazing group of community leaders as well. Our mayors, commissioners, elected officials, military affairs community, honorary commanders, and chambers. Uh, no matter your role, you are always there, always there for our airmen, for the military members on this installation. Congresswoman Mercosel Powell, Mayor Jimenez, Mayor Lozner, Mayor Bott, Mayor Wallace, Pepe, Kerry Russell Black, Jake, Kurt, Roxanne, uh, we love you all. Can't say thank you enough for all that you do for our airmen. Uh, our mission partners on base, what a fantastic group of joint interagency organizations. Special Ops Command South has a new commander, Admiral Davids, in his command, Sergeant Major Hall. Florida Air and Army National Guard, our Coast Guard MSST, Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, you made my life very easy by rarely picking up the phone, so keep doing that. Don't call me. Call the new guy. Know that we're here for you and to support your organization and your mission. To my front office staff, Lieutenant Colonel Lemoyne, Joyce, Alicia, Cato, uh, Scalia, uh, you, you manage an incredibly busy front office with grace, a smile on your face, and compassion for our airmen. Thanks for keeping me straight on where I was going, what I was doing. Uh, you certainly make life better for our airmen. Uh, Chief Ludo, you're an outstanding command chief who hit the ground running. You challenge ideas, bring well thought out processes, hold airmen accountable, but you also recognize them appropriately. Thanks for being a great wingman. My right hand man, Colonel Adam Myers. You took my vision as your own. Yes, you stole it. That's okay. And executed it exactly how I wanted you to. Ryder stepped up over the past four months to steer the ship while I've been away at uh, my civilian job. It was a lot of responsibility, long days, stressful situations, but you handled it also with grace, poise, a uh, thin handle of scotch every now and again, uh, but I can't thank you enough, Ryder. Uh, my group commanders, what, a, what an interesting group of individuals, and I say that with nothing but respect and admiration. They uh, span the leadership spectrum from facilitators, inspirers, servant leaders, visionaries, strategic thinkers, and everywhere uh, in between. And that's a good thing. Uh, one thing I certainly don't uh, care for is groupthink. And they challenged ideas with other thoughts. They definitely brought those great ideas. I'm going to miss our Sunday Scotch sessions and know that our groups continue to be in good hands. Smash, keep an eye on the F-35 and our uh, joint use airfield. Bo, we're going to get you that hangar of your dreams one of these days. Dave, thanks for uh, mastering the art of telework. Your, uh, support, your, your support team does an amazing job. Doc Clow, uh, you have a remarkable organization of uh, medical professionals. Uh, to my family, Jennifer and Bryce, unfortunately they could not make it down from Alaska, uh, as you can imagine with the situation uh, down here. Uh, you may have seen Bryce uh, tearing around base with me at times, enjoying our Easter egg hunts, movie nights, 4th of July, fireworks, tree lighting celebration. He was introduced to an amazing base, an amazing group of airmen, and I can't thank those who showed him what it means to serve and instill in him as, at a young age a sense of pride, a sense of patriotism, and what the Air Force is all about. That means the world to me. I miss you, Bryce, and I can't wait to see you. To Jennifer, she's put up with me for 26 years, 22 of which uh, we have been married. Uh, I am so fortunate that she's been with me the whole time. She loves our Air Force. She loves our airmen and what we do here. Uh, she also loves me, so that's a good thing. She brought energy fresh ideas on ways to support our airmen, their families, and is responsible for many of the improvements that we have here on the, on the installation. I look forward to our adventures in Alaska, and I love you. Y ahora me gustaría hablar con mis mecos. I have to speak of a few amazing airmen and the amazing accomplishments we've uh, done over these past two years, so, so hang on, this is gonna be quick. Uh, Grizz, Lax, Stroken, Jonan, our airfield management folks, you made our wings over homestead. Uh, air show an amazing success. What a, what a fun time that was and I look forward to uh, continuing those and seeing what, uh, what you guys do in the uh, future. 
As you remember, we had a tragedy with the Golden Knights in uh, 2019, and I'm still convinced to this day that our first responders saved lives uh, that day. Chief Payton, Captain Manguel, FAM, Lieutenant Whitley, Carreras, Ashford, Thompson, Firefighters Harding, Ricklick, and uh, Sergeant Simmons, it's a sad day, but you responded. We didn't lose any lives and uh, did remarkable. Protecting the whole installation day in, day out, Sergeant Dixon, uh, Senior Master Sergeant Romeo, the whole security forces team, you guys are absolutely amazing. It made my day when I'd come in through the gate, have an opportunity to talk to a young airman, uh, see how they were doing, and uh, it was just a, a wonderful way to start the, the day. Uh, Ricky can Cancel, no one is going to escape him, so heads up uh, for him. Taking care of our airmen and family and installation was a, a priority of mine. Miss Wanda Simons, Master Sergeant Navarro, Master Sergeant Kelly, Michael Young, and our boss contractors led by Jim Carey did a fantastic job on working on that uh, priority. We sat in Noble Eagle Missions, our ops and maintenance team uh, performed flawlessly, protecting our commander in chief for over uh, three months, multiple deployments in between uh, throughout the year. Triple, Taser, Blood, Sergeant Fiorata, Sergeant Hernandez, Roller, Captain Carmona, Sergeant Woolley, Master Sergeant uh, Hillmuth, and uh, Mac, that ops maintenance team, they do so much, they ask for very little in return and truly keep those jets flying. Our LRS and APS airmen, to include Airman uh, Broward, Schwartz, Chief Rodriguez, Noyes, uh, Sergeant Noyes, uh, Master Sergeant Gibson, Suarez, I'm going to mess this one up, Doug Kowitz, uh, Senior Smith, uh, many of the supplies down to uh, the Venezuelan people, you were part of those missions. We deployed a red flag, combat hammer, combat archer, oversaw many missions uh, overseas with our NATO partners as well. First Lieutenant uh, Jennifer Morse, Senior Airman Espinosa, Senior Master Sergeant Butrago, and uh, First Lieutenant Vasquez Torres and Kaufman uh, led efforts for our Dorian response as well. Just, just tremendous. Keeping those networks safe and worky, working. Tommy Pearson, thanks Tommy. Clancy, John Bosco, and Steve Dodge. Uh, just tremendous, tremendous work uh, from those guys. Our medics, they are, they are incredible. Uh, Sergeant Montavo, Dutch Vandervelt, Lieutenant Colonel Kramer, Major Dieges, and uh, Tech Sergeant Terrio support not only our airmen here, but did a lot of the missions to New York uh, when we were supporting the uh, COVID response as well. Uh, amazing. Let me just finish with this. Leading this wing and being your commander has been a distinct honor and the best job in my Air Force career, period. I look forward, looked forward, coming in every day, working for you, making our installation better, more mission effective, and ultimately setting you and your families up for success. No different from the day I took command, I've been extremely honored, blessed, and proud to serve as your commander. You're all relevant, appreciated, and important, and make a difference every day in defense of our nation. If you remember two years ago, when I took command, I asked you uh, one, one, one simple thing, and that is simply to do your best every day, and I promise to do the same. I'm happy to say we did that, you did your best, and I'm extremely proud of you. Thank you. One of the oldest military traditions is the passing of the unit flag, symbolizing the passing of authority from the outgoing commander to the new commander. Bearing the guide on is Chief Master Sergeant Christopher Bluto, Command Chief, 482nd Fighter Wing. General Piferario, permission to publish the order. Attention to orders. By direction of the President, Colonel David M. Castaneda is appointed Commander, 482nd Fighter Wing, Homestead Air Reserve Base, Florida, effective August 2nd, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the newest commander of the 482nd Fighter Wing, Colonel David Castaneda. Well, good afternoon, everyone. What an amazing effort that uh, this ceremony <laughs> has been, and I told you Paul about the paperwork, so you got to watch that. Um, General Borgen, General Pifario, Chief Master Sergeant Bluto, and Micah. Uh, 
Colonel Meyer, base mission partners, civic leaders, commanders, senior NCOs, family members, friends, and members of the 482nd Fighter Wing, thank you for being a part of this ceremony today. My family and I have had a great experience so far in the short time we've been in the local area. First to General Borgen. Thank you for the kind words and the opportunity to command the 42nd Fighter Wing. Thank you. We talked several months back as well as this morning, and we had a few needs to make this move happen for my family as well as my wife. Most importantly being advance notification and the time to make the correct decision. You provided that. So thank you very much for giving all that we needed to happen and for your leadership and what's required for one of your airmen at least. To General Piferario, I now know why they call you Piff, because I've said your last name two times in one speech and that's way too much. So General Piff, thanks to you and Jennifer for your leadership in making this a world-class organization. It's pretty clear to me in the short time that I've been here that you take priority in caring for your airmen and building relationships around the community. And I know Team Homestead appreciates that. Uh, on a personal note, Rochelle and I want to thank you for all the help and support, especially over the last months and the last couple of weeks. Uh, it has been great as we showed up here and we've had a warm welcome, so thank you very much. To the members of the 482nd Fighter Wing front office staff, Colonel Myers, Chief Bluto, Lieutenant Colonel Lemoyne, Mr. Robinson, Ms. Quinn, Marcel, and I'll even include the uh, PA and protocol, uh, Alicia, Leo, everybody to make this ceremony happen. Clearly with a pandemic and a hurricane, this has been a challenge and you made it happen. So I very much appreciate uh, all the effort and I know my family and everybody in the wing does as well. Uh, specifically with the transition over the last two weeks, uh, there has been uh, more than a warm welcome, and, and we're talking about specific details like online access computers, official photos, dependent IDs. I'll say this probably a very few times, but the attention to detail has been absolutely perfect. So thank you very much. And Sherry, a little bit of shout out to you. My kids like the uh, stuffed animal Mako, so that was pretty awesome. Thank you. To my parents and sisters and family that have traveled from afar, thank you for showing up. You've been to every change of command ceremony, four for four, and uh, this probably was the uh, most challenging one ever. So thank you so much for your support. To my immediate family, Rochelle, Ryan, Maya, and Jace, thank you for being so supportive and engaged with this move. Your understanding and resiliency is what I love about you most. My hope is that this move and this experience brings us closer together as a family in faith. And specifically to my wife, Rochelle. You know, they say your parents raise you, but what makes a man is a wife. And you certainly have done that for me. And it's certainly the case for me. You've made me the husband and the father that I am. And I suppose over the last couple months, I've been the moving specialist, the painter, the curtain rod hanger, the trampoline installer, an overall handyman kind of guy. But specific to this ceremony, you have made me the officer pilot, commander and leader I am. So thank you very much, I love you. Okay, to the men and women of the 42nd Fighter Wing. Outstanding units recruit and retrain exceptional talent and you are no exception. As previously mentioned by your commander, you're performing very well and excelling at your mission. So just because we have a change of command and a change in leadership doesn't need to mean that we need to change what we're doing. Continue the path to success. I am proud to be a member of such a distinguished team and to serve our nation together. A wise person once said, when you hire the best talent, it serves no purpose not to listen to them. To be clear, you are a talented airman and you will be heard. The airmen are the foundation of any outstanding Air Force unit. And the hallmark of exceptional leadership is caring for those airmen. This is especially true when we find ourselves in unique times as we do today. You are a great airman and will be cared for well. I believe military participation is one of the highest callings in the service to our nation. In the next several months, 
Hundreds of 482nd Fighter Wing Airmen will deploy for real-world taskings around the globe. You have trained well and will perform well. I also believe that success is a summation of learned effort over time. In life, there will be setbacks. How you recover or handle those setbacks makes all the difference in the world. Learning from failure is crucial to owning your skills and your talents. And only from learning failure can we master success. So as we depart 2020 in the next decade, the Air Force in the, is in the midst of transformation to include involving mission sets and how we operate around the globe digitally connected. If you've been in this unit for one or two months or two decades, you will see this transformation, this change. Our senior leaders know it. I've seen a glimpse of it, and it's coming. So by caring for airmen, mastering your mission, and developing your learned efforts, we will achieve success and lead this transformation. So to everyone, either in person or online, I thank you for being here today, and I thank you for your service. And I look forward to working with you over the next several years. May each and every one of you have a blessed day and a great rest of the UTA. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Castaneda. The men and women of the 42nd Fighter Wing welcome Colonel Castaneda as he assumes his new duties as commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for attending and have yourself a wonderful Air Force Day.